Hello, I'm JW. This time we have a consuming unit to have a look at. This one has been sent in by Darren. Now this is a fairly old one, and it's also a fairly rare make, which uh, you don't really see anymore. It hasn't been made for many decades, and even at the time they weren't uh, particularly common either. So uh, let's have a look at that one, and also see what's inside. So here's me for this one, and uh, this item was removed from a private house, believed to be installed sometime in the 1960s. I thought it might make an interesting turn or inspection. And then this is from Darren. Now here's the thing itself, and uh, this is branded Lupus, which uh, certainly was a brand that was used in the 1950s and 60s. And usually for that era it does have circuit breakers inside, and uh, most of the time it was fuses then, so particularly the uh, rewirable versions. Uh, we've got the uh, labelling there for the four circuits, main isolator, and little switch down here which basically advises about the fact that it has miniature circuit breakers and does not have fuses. Here's a look at the label. And bearing in mind that at the time this was done, it was very uncommon to have circuit breakers, certainly in a domestic premises. It was very more likely to have fuses. So what we've got here is uh, an MCB controls each circuit. MCBs automatically switch off if circuits are overloaded or faulty. If this occurs, switch on. If again it switches off, disconnect all appliances on that circuit, switch on again. If it still switches off, call an electrician. However, if it remains on, then either the circuit was overloaded or one of the appliances is faulty. And it also says new fuses, just to reinforce the fact. And this was necessary because say, at the time most people weren't aware of circuit breakers or how they operated. Now in the middle here we've got four circuits and the main isolator. And these are labelled at cooker, plugs, heater and lights. Now this bit of plastic here is quite bizarre because it's obviously been made and just slots into that piece there. And if you actually have a look at this, it's not particularly well cut on the top and bottom, so it was definitely trimmed out of a piece of something else. And uh, see on the back there, a bit of green uh, colouring on it. But these uh, words here are actually pressed in, so they are actually recessed. It's not just printing on the surface. So some kind of machine has uh, sort of stamped into that, and then it's been coloured over the green later. Now, I'm not entirely sure what kind of machine that was, because, say, this doesn't look like a tape. So it's not like those old dyno machines where you could uh, get the tapes, which are so adhesive, and then just clunk the letters in as you went. And apart from that, they were the other way around. They were stamped in from the back, whereas this is pressed in from the front. So I'm not entirely sure what would have made that. Uh, if anybody knows what type of device would have made things like that, then please put it in the comments. And that just slides in the top there. And it's not likely that was made in a factory because uh, obviously if you bought one, it wasn't necessarily going to be this particular arrangement of circuits. You could obviously choose that later. And also we've got the isolator thing here, which although it's in a similar deal, this is obviously a printed item. Just slots in there with this plastic cover. So that presumably would have been supplied with the thing from say the factory. Now another thing of note on this particular thing is the way around that these actually work. So the isolate here is in the on position, we can turn that to off, and note that it's off in the up position, and the circuit breakers are also off in the up position, which of course is backwards to how modern circuit breakers and isolators actually work. So let's turn it on, it's basically pulling it down to the on position there. You can see it's got the red indication on the back there, and then off is that white that way around. So light switches in the UK are still this way around, so off is always up but uh, circuit breakers and isolators in the consumer units are all the other way around now and have been for a considerable time. Now the lid just comes off with these two screws, and it's not actually a screw, it's just this sort of quarter turn thing riveted on the back, so that just turns there, and of course would hook under the uh, lip of the case here. Same on the bottom. Again, pretty uh, robust way of fixing. As you turn that down, it literally clamps the lid down onto the top. This is all sheet steel, grey painted, and it's pretty thick as well. I mean, this is not uh, bending at all there. Very heavy duty stuff. Now inside we've got the main switch here, and the four circuit breakers in this case. Main supply comes in on the bottom of this one, marked uh, N and L here. And then we've got two wires there which are sort of factory installed. Goes over to the neutral and the bus bar, which we'll look at later. The big hole in the back of this one, that's obviously where the cables came in. They did put a rubber grommet around that one, and then there's also a uh, brass bush in the side here for some other cabling. Fairly likely that the supply came in here and across up to the switch there, and then that was used for the circuit cabling at the back. 
Now have a look on the front of the circuit breaker here, we can see the rated 440 volts AC and interestingly 125 volts DC as well. So if you had a DC supply you could also use these on that. 440 of course is a bit high for domestic but that would have been applicable in a uh, three phase installation. The old uh, 250 volts uh, single phase and 440 three phase. Front of these are colour coded, so sort of a reddish colour for the 30 amps there. 15 amps is blue, 5 is green, and also the 45 is green as well. And that doesn't really fit in with the coding that say Wilex and others used. The 5s were white on those, but nevertheless, uh, those are what we've got. So sort of a bluish is right. And that might be classed as sort of reddish colour. And say 45 green, which is the same as some of the others. Here's the main switch, and see at the bottom is marked 2L and 80. 80 is probably the rating, so that'll be 80 amps. This cover, again, just uh, removes here. This is a fairly thick, sort of Bakelite type plastic, so fairly substantial there. And then inside, you see the two uh, contacts there. So you've got double screws here for the incoming supply, and also the same on the top there. Those factory fitted leads go out to the various things inside. Nice snap on the switch there, and it's common with all these, once the thing is off the front it's quite confusing in terms of whether it's on or off, but uh, again this was not intended to be opened with the main power connected. So uh, yes, decently made, and again this is all that sort of phenolic Bakelite type plastic here. Decent sized terminals, and so a good uh, snap action on that. Now the wiring inside, we've got the two leads here, this black one is the neutral. And that comes across to this bar on the top here. Again, two screws there to secure it in position. And we have four points here for each circuit. So four circuit breakers, four connection points for that. Earth connection down at the bottom. Again, we've got four of those, and that's actually connected directly to the steel case. And there we've also got this terminal on the side. That's where your main earth connection would have gone. Just a stud going through from the outside. So these four would be for the individual circuits. That's your main earth coming in over there. And in terms of the connecting of the circuit wiring, the circuit wiring actually would connect on the bottom of these, so in this uh, terminal here. And you can actually remove these by loosening the screw on the top. And they just uh, unclip like that. So again, made that same black uh, phenolic resin, or Bakelite type plastic, fairly substantially sized items. So on the top here, this is where the incoming supply would go, and see there's a hole in the back there, you slide up the screw on the front. What that's connecting to is this bar along the back here, so see there's that tab there which goes into the top of that circuit breaker, and that goes along the back of all of these, and we see the rest of it there. That's your line coming in from the switch, so it just goes up and over onto that bar, which runs along the back for all of them. And then this metal bar on the bottom, this is basically just a structural support, not electrically connected. And it just has these hooks which uh, hook onto the bottom of each circuit breaker. Now have a look at the circuit breakers. So uh, they're branded here Lupus and they're Lupus Midgets. Fairly decent size. On the side here we can see the uh, manufacturer, the uh, MCB company Manchester Limited, and made in England. Other side, uh, just plain there, no further writing. And it's interesting to note these don't have any standard numbers marked on them, or what their sort of braking capacity is or anything else. All we've got is the current rating of 5 amps for this one, and then the voltage, the uh, 440 and uh, 125 for DC that we saw previously. So uh, very limited on the information there. And a bit of uh, dust there. And again, that's just where the incoming supply goes. And then this is your outgoing terminal. Now these are actually decently made because we just loosen the screw here, and we can see that inside it does have that additional plate, so the screw isn't actually grinding down into the wire itself, it is just pressing down on that plate, so you provide a decent clamping force, and uh, a lot of uh, circuit breakers now of course have a similar thing, but that was fairly unusual, certainly for these things at the time. And again, it's a similar deal with the thing on the top, just sort of goes in from the back and then clamps onto that prong from the bus bar. In terms of the action on these, uh, it's fairly stiff to get them to lock into position, but then they lock down like that, and then the opening mechanism, a good snap on that, so once it's released either by the front lever or the thing inside, 
that will uh, snap off very reliably. So uh, decent quality items, let's say these were not particularly common at the time and certainly these days certainly a rare item to come across. So to look there at the lupus uh, consuming it with four lupus midget circuit breakers inside and say so those are a pretty rare item even at the time they weren't especially common and certainly if you want to go searching for those today have a major problem trying to find them. Uh, of course you wouldn't be uh, obviously looking for them anyway. Now uh, there are pictures of this on the website at flameport.com along with uh, huge amounts of other stuff so if you want to see more of those in detail then do go and have a look there. And I also mentioned there's a whole pile of other stuff there as well, not just old stuff, lots of things on new stuff as well. But uh, that's it for this time, and until next time, thanks for watching.